Hello, my name is Connell, and today we are actually going to be speaking about some healthcare. So, being the end of July, I thought it was the most apt time, actually Google Trends thought it was the most apt time, to um, evaluate and look at and explain what the Trump Healthcare Act and the Obamacare Act, uh, what the two of them are, because the um, ACHA, which is Trump Care, um, the vote is about to come. So in this video, um, I'm going to be explaining what the two care, or what the two plans do, how they work, what they're based off of, what their objectives are. So to jump right in, the ACA, which is the Affordable Care Act, is also known as Obamacare. So I'm going to be referring to them as either Obamacare or the ACHA. Um, the ACHA is Trump Care, essentially. So I, American healthcare is extremely complex in the sense that it's basically this gigantic free-for-all. Um, so for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to dumb this down as much as I can. I'm sorry. So the United States is one of the only countries in, in the world, the first world country at least, um, that's established, that has essentially no legitimate government assistance for healthcare with two exceptions. So these two exceptions are Medicare and Medicaid. And what both of these do is they provide healthcare for mentally ill slash disabled people and everyone who's over 65 is Medicare. So where it becomes complex is what happens to everyone else. So we have a, frankly, a rampant crisis with healthcare in this country where, for lack of a better term, it's very American. So when I say American, it is a f***ing free-for-all. Um, essentially, there's no warranted program by the government until Obamacare came along. So what Obamacare did was because most Americans either did two things. Um, either an employer would pay for someone's health care, pay for your health care, so the employer would work directly with a health care company and you could get it so you could get dentist care. You would, your, your employer, your benefits would cover it. The other way, people who were not fortunate enough to have health care um, through their employer would have to buy it on their own. Um, now these plans would vary, you could get like a very basic package, that's like, you know, checkups and stuff, or other things come into play, and this is where it gets really tricky. So, usually for employers, you would be okay, you would probably get good healthcare if you worked for a bigger company, but if you had to pay on your own, and you had a certain amount of conditions, a lot of times companies will reject you. So what's very scary for a lot of Americans, and what could potentially screw again a lot of Americans with the ACHA, aka Trump Care, is that people with what's known as pre-existing conditions, um, severe conditions, uh, certain genetic traits could be completely denied by certain insurance companies. It, the most profitable way an insurance company looks at a patient or a potential client is they say, okay, how likely is this person to get sick and how severe would this sickness be? So basically, what's going to happen is these companies, when you apply to them, it's high risk or low risk, and they're going to take low risk patients. They're going to take healthy patients who most likely won't need the care, at least not as strenuously as other patients. So depending on your world view, of course, if you if you like people or not, I guess, um, this was a bad system, and it, it still is a bad system because you have tons and tons of people who cannot be covered by healthcare unless they either switch careers or switch jobs. They don't have healthcare. The Affordable Care Act literally did what it said. It made cheap healthcare available to almost every American. And this made sense. So in theory, Obamacare worked really well, right? Like you have all these people who get covered, and what happened was people who refused to um, sign up for the healthcare would get a huge tax hit because in reality, if you look at the economics of the situation and you completely delve into it, more people benefit if everyone kind of jumps on and pays whatever the deductible, deductible is. So naturally, Americans who have no idea what's good for them and what isn't, um, lost their... So naturally, um, everybody started to hate it and um, not everyone, I should say, but people who were being forced to pay for it, they didn't like it. Keep in mind, most of the people who hate Obamacare and still do and want it repealed are the same people who don't have health care normally, they go to the hospital with some ridiculous condition like a heart attack or something, can't pay for it, and make the hospital eat it. 
That, that's the kind of people getting angry at this. So, to summarize, before Obamacare, the system was in com even more disarray. It was completely... It was botched. It made no sense. Another key aspect is 66% of the people who enrolled for Obamacare, or who could do it, were below or at the poverty line. So the bottom quarter of Americans, people who literally can barely feed themselves. Alright, this is random. Um, I know I'm wearing completely different clothes, my camera died, so I'm just switching. So to summarize, Obamacare is not perfect. It is essentially a blanket net. It doesn't do a whole lot, but it does provide basic care for people who wouldn't be able to get it otherwise, who either are too poor or just uh, insurance companies wouldn't accept them. Now what the ACHA is going to do, at least what it's designed to do, is just to rip away Obamacare without replacing it whatsoever, which frankly is what the Republicans always meant to do. However, the ACHA has been rushed so much and it was the bill was just kind of like thrown together so randomly that it's 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 terrible. It, it's it's not cohesive. It makes no sense. So the vote happened, at least in Congress, and Senator John McCain, he came back, he came from whatever, he has a tumor in his head and he's got cancer, but he came back from the hospital and said no to this bill, which is honestly a very good thing. So from a nonpartisan, non-biased view, I think that Obamacare is a better solution because it leads, it gives people who wouldn't have care otherwise care, which eventually will not hamper the economy. If we continue to have this broken system, it's just going to feed and make more problems and make it worse, and our economy is, is it's going to suffer eventually. So if you don't know, the vote um, was stifled. It's not completely out of the woods yet. It's not been trashed yet. It's still kind of in Congress for the most part, but it's probably not going to pass. So that concludes the video today. If you learned something, please share with a friend or subscribe if you haven't done so. Also, if you have a question about economics, history, science, um, theater, anything of love, um, <laughs> uh, please drop it in the comments below and you will be featured in the next video. And with that, I'd like to say my name is Connell and have a good one.